We'll start with the prayers. Om Badram Tarane de Shunyama Deva Badram Pashe Maksha Devya Jatra Stirai Rangai His Tushtova Gum Sasta no Bihi Vese Madeva Hitam Yada Yoho Swastina Indro Vredashava Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swastina Stam Shora Rishtanini Swastina Obra Haspatir Dadato Om Shanti 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 Adhyasa Bhashyam, consisting of 16 sections, is a technical commentary given out before starting the Brahma Sutra text. We are studying the text to understand the fundamental problem of all human beings. It might look slightly difficult to understand because there's a lot of reasoning involved and it's a very, very subtle topic. I would still recommend all of you to go through this text once and you will find that you are able to understand the deep meaning of this text when we go towards the end of the text. Very, very deep meanings are there in this Bhashya. Many of us, we do the Upanishads and still wonder how I can be what the Upanishads are telling me about myself, which is pure awareness consciousness. Even after 20, 30 years of study of Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads, people still ask this question and then they are not able to find an answer. I consider this Bhashyam as a very fundamental text to be studied immediately after the Bhagavad Gita, before we start the Upanishads, because the content of Upanishad is our Swarupam. It describes to us that I am of the nature of pure consciousness. But then, how do I reconcile this fact that I am not the body or mind, but I am the awareness principle? That is a fundamental problem which we must note why we are studying this Vashya. We have seen sections, four sections so far. Out of 16 sections, we have covered four. Today, we'll start with the fifth section and then we'll move on. The fifth section is describing the Adhyasa as a worldly experience and natural experience. First, we'll chant this, uh, uh, chant this, uh, Bhashyam. Tathacha loke anubhavaha, tathacha loke anubhavaha, shakti kahi rajatavad avabhasate, shakti kahi Rajatavad avabhasate ekaschandraha ekaschandraha sadvitiyavad sadvitiyavad iti So what this verse is saying is it gives us two examples of Adhyasa. 
and it this tells us that it is a normal natural worldly experience for all of us now this is what shankaracharya says till the end he says adhyasa is something which is natural it is a phenomena of this world that you must be very clear because then you will understand the right uh, meaning of how i can remove this adhyasa so here in this in this uh, section we are talking about two worldly experiences one is the shell silver and the second is one single moon appearing as dual tathacha thus we see loke anubhava in our worldly experience also we experience adhyasa shuktika hi rajavat avabhasate now here is the example of shell when you are walking in the beach and you see a shell but you take it as silver that is the example which is described here in this section raja uh, rajastavad avabhasate the shell which is got similarity between itself and silver it appears as though it is silver therefore we may commit an error and we go to pick it up and we we feel there is value in that silver ekaha chandraha another example is given one moon sadvitiya vad it appears double why it appears double because it says it is anirvachaniyam anirvachaniyam means it is some phenomena either it could be a defect in the eye or sometimes we suppose it's like a cataract or suppose we uh, uh, suppose we put a finger in front of our eyes or squeeze our eyes we'll be able to see two three moons now iti basically there are four topics in this in this bhashya the first topic is uddesha uddesha means question and answer what is the objection what is the reply that is the first two sections lakshana is the second second topic lakshana means what are the indicative what is the indication or the definition of adhyasa which is what we saw last week it was a little confusing but we don't have to really dwell too much on that because we are negating all the other philosophers so all have got adhyasa experience is the topic now which we are seeing which is got lakshana what is the indication of this phenomena called adhyasa which is called as superimposition so this topic started in third verse fourth verse and the fifth verse again this lakshana topic will come in topic number 14 where shankara acharya will summarize the adhyasa bhashyam with the definition and the next the third section is pariksha pariksha means examination is really adhyasa there or are we imagining something does the definition of adhyasa apply to the atma anatma context it does it really happen i am interested in knowing the self which is my real nature why are you bringing the topic of adhyasa that is what is the topic from 6 to 13 so there is a lot of deeper understanding of this text in the verses 6 to 13 there will be question and answer in those sections 
And the last two sections are 15 and 16. It is just a conclusion where Shankaracharya says, Adhyasa is a common experience to all of us. The moment we wake up in the morning, we are not understanding or we are not remaining as a pure self, which is consciousness, but we are led to interact with the world as per prarabdha karma. So we cannot avoid it, but we can understand this superimposition is taking place and in our understanding, we can remove the ignorance of the true self. That is the goal. It's a, it's a cognitive process. It is something to do with our understanding. It is deep inside our own mind. Going deep into our mind, we have to understand that I am not able to see the difference between consciousness, which is the awareness. Awareness means what I am able to see. We all assume, assume that the seeing is in the eyes. I, the, our eyes and ears are only the instrument. The power in the eyes or the ears or in the tongue or in the skin does not belong to the body. This is the most important finding of this commentary. You will discover that these are only instruments. They don't have any power in them. That power in them is called as the consciousness. This is what you should understand. And this power of consciousness is totally different than the body which is inert. But in our experience, we see the inert body and the consciousness as one entity. I'm trying to separate the two so that I can understand my real nature. See how deep is this topic. It is easy to understand physics or botany or zoology or even medicine and law and so on, but this deals with our mind. We are trying to find out what is the source of our mind. Is there a power which is controlling this? And if so, what is the nature of that power? During the waking state, we see only the world. Like silver shining. So the world is nothing else but silver shining. That is what is comparison. Okay. We don't see Brahman. Brahman here refers to the pure awareness, consciousness. It is like the rope in a rope snake example. It is the shell in a shell silver example. So this pure consciousness, existence, bliss, which we call it as Satchit Ananda, is my real nature. But I drop my near real nature and I get attached to the body, which is inert. Through this inert body, that consciousness is functioning and it's see, experiencing the world. This process in which the consciousness comes in contact with the matter body is called as adhyasa. I'm sure you are all understand this phenomena. For those who have done some amount of Upanishads, like Mandukya, there what we are saying is waking state is coming, dream state is coming, the sleep state is coming automatically for all of us. 
It is a cycle which is going on from birth to death. But in this cycle, there is one thing which is constant, that is the consciousness awareness principle. I was conscious when I was a baby and consciousness when I was a student, child, adult, old age. I'm conscious all the time. That consciousness is the subject matter of the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita and Brahma Sutra and of this commentary. So we don't say Adhyasa is taking place normally if you don't come to Upanishads or Gita. Only when you come, even in the Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads, they don't discuss this topic called as Adhyasa in a great way. It is only Shankaracharya who is a teacher, a great teacher of Advaita Vedanta, who takes this topic very seriously. And he says, understand this phenomena which is happening. Then you study the Upanishads. I will show you how the Upanishads are revealing your nature as Brahman or Satchidananda. I will link all the topics which are there in the Upanishads and I will show it to you that you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are the pure light of consciousness. Isn't this topic very important for us? Throughout our life, we are making an error in understanding life. We just carry on with our life as if it is an automatic thing and there is nothing else but except sukham and dukkha, joy and sorrow. In sleep, I know I exist, but I don't know my real nature as pure existence without the body, mind and world. The world consists of five elements which are inert. The body consists of five elements which are inert. There is no sentiency in them. The mind is also subtle element, again inert. But the knowingness in them, the life in them is this conscience, is this consciousness, Chaitanya the spiritual principle. Spiritual principle has got features which are totally different than the matter. Science studies matter principle and it has gone into very great depths in understanding electrons, protons, neutrons, particles. Uh, you know, it's gone very deep in understanding the matter, which is a seen object. And the seer, consciousness, the knowing principle has not been the subject matter of science. That is where Vedanta comes into play. Where science stops, Vedanta starts. And then it goes very deep into this topic. I wake up and say, I didn't experience in, anything in sleep, but was happy. So what is happening is there is ignorance of Atma in the sleep state. I am the consciousness is the truth. That is what I am, ex I am in the sleep state. But what I experience is called as a veiling nature. It is covered. That covered nature is called as tamas, darkness. Therefore, I say I did not know anything. This is called as ignorance. And that is the fundamental basis it is the material cause of this entire jagat. 
I don't know myself, that is, the, like clay is the material cause of all pots. This ignorance, I don't know myself, is the material cause for our waking state, for our dream state. In dream also, I am not aware of the substratum, which is Atma, the light of consciousness. In the example shell silver, we say idam rajatam, rajatam, this silver, shuktika is the shell, rajatam is the silver. This silver is like saying this world, this body, this mind, this sense organ, all we say as this, 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 this. In Sanskrit, it is called idam pratyaya. We don't say shell is appearing. We don't say consciousness is appearing as the body. This is the error. Try to understand this error very clearly and dwell on this error. Then you will be able to remove that error. That is what is the cognitive change. This is where Shankaracharya is telling all the students to understand this process of error. He says, you remove this error. The moment you remove this error, you know yourself, because that happens to be your nature. So this line is very important. Don't say shell is appearing as silver, or consciousness is appearing as the body, mind, and the world. If we say there is no adhyasa, then there is no liberation possible. There is no mukta purusha possible. But when we use a torchlight of Shastra, the Shastra clearly says, you are the purusha. Satchidananda Sarupaha, in the deep sleep state, but you do not know yourself as that nature. Therefore, what happens to us is, on one side we get the knowledge of the Upanishads. On the other side, Shankaracharya tries to explain to us, there is an error Please remove this error of superimposition. When we get this knowledge from the Upanishads and when we remove this error in our own mind, we become free from the darkness of ignorance. This is the deepest portion of this Adhyasa Bhashya. How does it happen is explained in these lines which I have written here. After the Upanishadic Atma Jnanam, we say that this world is seen in Adhyasa, in, in ignorance I am seeing. Because ignorance is the raw material, like the clay, like the gold. So gold is what? Gold is the raw material on which all the instruments are made, all the chain, bangle, everything is made. When I look at the chain or bangle, I'm seeing gold. When I look at the world, what is happening, you should know after this Bhashyam, what I am seeing is ignorance in totality. This is the benefit of the spiritual study. If you are not able to do it, again go back and study the Bhashyam, study the scriptures, you will come to this conclusion one day for sure. Your mind will still be, will not accept it immediately. Because it is, a, it is, a, it is something which you have never heard before. Shankaracharya tells us in the end that we are living with this Adhyasa for many lives. Can you imagine life after life we have lived in this ignorance of our true nature? 
I mean, you can just imagine. I have lived 30 years in this life or 40 years or 50 years or 60 years in this life. I never knew I was not this body. I was pure awareness. And how is my Swarupam? Exactly like in sleep. Did I ever think this? No. Only when you come to Upanishads, ah, this is, this is what it is. It's something which is mind-boggling. And we exist. We exist as what? That is what the Upanishad is asking us to think. It says you think for yourself that in the sleep state, you are without the medium of the body or the mind, and that is awareness. That is existence. That is ananda. That is happiness. Instead of knowing your nature, you are running behind the world. The world has got, it is false. It is falsehood. It is there because it is based on ignorance. All my experiences in the world, whatever it may be, it is short-lived. Anithyam. So shell is appeared as silver avapasishta and atma is appearing as the world like the gold appears as the chain and ring. Atma, the pure consciousness, that is the substratum and it is appearing only pratiyate. Shell is appearing as silver, the statement is made by whom? By one not doing adhyasa. Suppose I'm a jnani. Suppose now I understood, oh, this is what it is. The one who knows that the shell is not silver, he is saying the shell is appearing as silver. You correct that nature. He is, that means a jnani is telling an ajnani, a person who is caught up in that error, he is saying, you are a jnani, you are, you, are, you are not using your discrimination. Please understand this is silver. So it is a jnani who is watching somebody going through adhyasa who is making this statement. The teacher who uses the shastra, who uses the for the for to say the world is uh, like uh, silver, like uh, it is like uh, a superimposition. It is it is like a dream. On what basis do we say this? It is only on the basis of Upanishads. Tattvamasi, you are Brahman, you are the Radhishthanam, you are not the Samsari Jiva. Based on the strength of the Upanishadic statement, I can make this conclusion that whatever I'm seeing is superimposed on awareness. This fundamental point, if it's not clear, please ask me. I will again explain to you. You can put it in the chat box. So the Ved Agraha, that means not knowing the difference, not knowing the two types of superimpositions which I'm making. What is the first error that I'm making? We have superimposed the sense of individuality. The Jiva Bhava on Sakshi Atma. When it comes to life, when it comes to our day-to-day -day living, I am a Jiva, I am a mother, I am a father, I am a doctor. For our Vyavahara, we need it. There is no doubt about it. Only when you are seriously asking the question, what is my nature? At that time, we should understand there is an error which is happening. I am Sakshi according to the scriptures. I am Sakshi means I am not at all 
involved in the transactions, but I appear to be involved. And the second error is we have superimposed plurality. Jagat Bhava on Sakshi Atma. So there are two types of error. The Jiva Bhava on Sakshi and Jagat Bhava on Sakshi. And they become vasanas in us. Vasana means impressions which are stored in our memory. In the Karana Sharira. So every time when I am born, according to the law of the universe, the jiva gets born every time when it leaves a body, it takes another body. But the Upanishad is now telling me, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jivo Brahmaiva Naparaha. This is the essence of all the Upanishadic teaching which Shankaracharya has written in Brahma Jnana Valli Mala. I have taken this text, some videos are available on this. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Jivo Brahmaiva Naparaha. This comes in a text written by uh, called Brahma Jnana Valli. What does it say? Brahman is the truth. This awareness is the truth. The world of objects and beings is false. See what a bold statement Shankaracharya makes. There is a separation, separativeness, which is called as Jiva Bhava. I see myself different than the world. That is false according to Shankaracharya. Because the world and me are one entity called as consciousness. And the science we teach us how to see my real nature is called as the science of Vedanta. Jiva is single, non-dual, effulgent consciousness Brahman, according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures, Jagat, the world, is nothing but it is pure existence. Consciousness and existence are one entity. But I am seeing it as two different entities. I am consciousness, I am the body Jiva, I see the world which is in front of me as another entity. The shell silver example is with reference to the world. Reality is the shell, it is seen as the silver jagat. Reality is what? I the consciousness. But it is seen as what? It is seen as the world. There are two emotions which we all have. One is called as raga, attachment. And the second is called as dvesha. Dvesha means hatred. And in these two opposite emotions, our behavior is different. That is why Shastra takes two examples. The raga is said to be shobhana adhyasa. Shobhana means I like it. Therefore, I am superimposing. Because I like silver, that is called as Shobhana Adhyasa. So there are certain things in the world, certain beings in the world, we are all having Shobhana, liking towards them. So morning to evening, I am running after them. All our activities can be divided into two, pravarti, nivritti. Dvesha means running away from, ashobhana adhyasa. Ashobhana adhyasa means I don't like it. Therefore, I want to get away from it. So either we are running towards the liking light objects. Suppose I like a TV, I like a car. I keep on thinking about it. I must buy that car. I, am buy, I must buy that BMW. I must buy that Mercedes. Or I want this sari. I want this 
TV. I want to we'll say ABC, a diamond ring, you know. So this is the one type of activity. I want to have a PhD in Sanskrit language. Or, you know, the, the people have so many different types of likings. Here, Shankaracharya is analyzing the two behaviors. Pravarti, Nivarti. Nivarti is running away from. I don't like that person. I will never see him in my life. Wherever he is, I will not be there. If he's walking in the north, I'll be walking in the south. If I see an object, I don't like it, I will not go near it. So that is nivritti. So rope example, rope snake example is taken up for nivritti marga. Rope, I take it as snake, therefore I'm afraid of the snake. I don't like the snake. That example is taken. Shell silver is taken for raga, shobhana dhyasa. So throughout our life, we try to change these two categories. Things and persons I dislike, I see if I can like them. Whom I like, I feel they are not worthy, hence try to drop them from my mind. These are all internal emotions which are going through. And this is basic to all human embodiments. Reality is one consciousness alone, but it is seen as the jiva and jagat. Seeing one along with other things, that is what is happening. Therefore, Shankaracharya here gives us one more example. It is called as Ekash Chandra. Sadhvitiyavata, one moon appearing as dwell, one consciousness appearing as you, me, others. You and me are what? You are also conscious, I am also consciousness. But do I see it as consciousness? No. I look at the body and say you are different, I am different because I look at my body. This is called as adhyasa. It's very natural. This is the problem which Shankara says is the real problem of human identification. I see you different from me. Asmat means I. Yushmat means you. I am Nirupadika. I am not I am not the conditioned body. This I is seen sopadika with upadi as yushmat. Yushmat means in Sanskrit you. So this one consciousness is appearing as two or three or four or th six billion people, but it is the body which is six billion, not consciousness. That is what is the essence of one moon appearing as two moons. Upadi and what is upahitam? This example is very, very going to be, this example will be repeated several times in this Bhashya. What is Upadi? What is Upahitam? What is the crystal? What is the red hibiscus? In this 15th section again, we will see this example. What is the definition of Upadi? If you understand the definition of Upadi, you have understood the entire Adhyasa Bhashya, but it takes little bit of time to understand this definition. Your mind has to go through this definition many times. Then only you will see, initially you may get some idea, but to get to the bottom of this definition, it takes time. Because it's a very subtle understanding. Upasamipe sthitva sviyan gunan anyatra dadadati. That is the Sanskrit 
description of upadi upe samipe sthitva in english it means staying near english seems to be very easy sviyan gunan anyatra staying near what throws its property on the other is called as upadi is a technical term suppose you have a red hibiscus flower that is called as upadi you can replace that with body mind intellect sense organs when you want to study yourself the crystal is plain colorless but when you have the crystal and the hibiscus together what happens the crystal appears red consciousness is nirgunam pure chaitanyam awareness which is what we experience in our sleep state we do not know that state to be my true nature because i have never been told that i am of the nature of pure awareness what is the meaning of pure awareness only it means it is without the body and the mind and the world that's all purity means that i remove this body i remove the mind and i ask myself who am i that is what is chaitanyam that is what is awareness that is what is called as consciousness and that is what is my experience in sleep isn't it simple why do we have to make it so complicated if you understand upadi as upadi the whole science of vedanta becomes very simple that pure awareness is appearing as this jiva because of the body it is appearing as the whole ishvara the creator all that is coming only because of the upadhi upadhi means what it is something which stays near the consciousness it throws its properties of inertness on the consciousness and it appears as if it is a consciousness that object person which does this function of transference is called as upadi if the child is if the son if my daughter is in front then i say it is my daughter my son my car my wealth my wife my husband what is happening if the body is near the consciousness my i am the pure consciousness don't don't forget that fact in that pure consciousness that body is coming i say i am now interact with with my with so and so this happens in the office this is natural throughout the day it happens but what shankara acharya is saying is pointing out to us that this is what is happening in truth it is a very very subtle topic but if you are able to if your intellect is sharp if the intellect is one pointed focused you will be able to catch this then it becomes very simple no actual transference takes place because consciousness or awareness is ever asangaha asangaha means it never gets attached like the crystal crystal and the flower can never get attached the crystal never becomes red it only appears red because of the upadi similar nirgunam consciousness appears to be with the body and then i say i am 60 years old 50 years old forgetting that i am pure awareness forgetting my nature as the pure sachidan and the atma which is divine which is which is 
Paramatma, which is the real cause of this entire jagat. Upadi will not give its property to something else. Upadi enables a kind of superimposition without sharing its property with the superimposed. Red color of flower seemingly transferred to the crystal. That which transfers its property to something else is called as upadi. It stays apart, but in some way is connected, enabling the superimposition to take place. This is technical. You should understand what is happening. This is the way we should see. If you understand clearly what is happening between me, the consciousness, and the world, then it is easy to understand the Vedanta. Whole Upanishad becomes very easy. The moment the Upanishad says, Ashabdam, Asparsham, Rupam, Gandam, very easy to understand. I am not the Upadi, I am the pure consciousness. Now, Timira Dosha, coming back to the moon example, which is explaining us the duality, how duality is coming into the phenomenal world, how it is coming. If I am pure consciousness, how do I see everything as plural? Here, the eye defect is not transferred to the moon. That means the defect is there in the instrument. It enables seeing double moon. So ignorance is there. It does not touch the self. This pure consciousness is never affected. Even if I see the world, anything happening in the world, it does not affect the pure self. But what creates this duality is ignorance. Ajnanam, avidya. Avidya means ignorance of the true nature. And this upadi does not pervade the substratum. Pervade the substratum means it does not affect. Okay, so anything happening in my mind, see what happens is when we are faced with a sorrowful situation, the mind goes through turbulence. But that is the nature of the prarab, the karma of the body. It is not anything to do with the consciousness awareness. Padmat Padacharya, a great commentator, a great disciple of the Brahma Sutra, has written a bhashyam called Prasannam Gambiram on this Adhyasabhashyam. On this Adhyasabhashyam, Padma Padacharya, the disciple has written. Many, many bhashyams are there. There are more than 100 bhashyams on this Shankaracharya Bhashyam. And the book which I was referring last week, that book has got 12 commentaries they have put together and they have formed that book of 1,000 pages. That 1,000 pages, I'm, 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 I'm trying to put it together in... in, uh, in it is put together in 16 sections, which we are trying to cover. So what it, uh, uh, this, this superimposition, deceptively, it looks simple at first glance. Oh, it is, oh, the moon is appearing as two. But then when you go deeper and study why this plurality is happening in the world, then you will realize that the depth of this problem of superposition. How to understand this moon example? This world, Jagat, is Sopadika. Sopadika means it is with a medium. Like the shell silver or the rope snake or the crystal and the flower. It is the whole jagat can be taken up like that. Whereas when you come to the moon, Chandraha Prakashaha, 
here the upadi is involved, the medium is involved. But here in the case of the moon, there is no upadi there. There is no, uh, there, there is no red hibiscus flower or something like that. It is my own ignorance, which because of my ignorance that the moon is appearing as two. That is what we have to, we have to consider when we are asking the question, how one consciousness is appearing as many. In the case of rope snake, the dim light which is there is not an upadi. It is not something which creates, which creates this uh, superimposition. It is the ignorance which is creating the superimposition of the snake on the rope. Mind is upadi for atma. And because mind's attribute is superimposed on the self, we say, I am sorrowful. I love somebody. I hate somebody. I have compassion. These are all the properties which are superimposed. So what we have to note is that superimposition can happen with upadi in the case of shell silver and rope snake where we have dharma adhyasa or it can be without upadi and we can like in the case of the moon appearing as two. Two in examples indicative of wise persons watching this superimposition. Okay, so this is just the two examples. I've given some revision here, uh, but that is not important. I've already gone through this whole thing. So section five gives us two examples of upadi. One is shell silver, we say because, or the, uh, the, the, or the or hibiscus and the flower, which I uh, gave it from my side. Uh, because it is easy to understand the shell, uh, the, the hibiscus flower and the crystal because our awareness is like the crystal. Okay, now we go to the next section, which is uh, the sixth section. We'll see what it says. Katham punaha, katham punaha, pratyag. Atmani Avishaye Pratyag Atmani Avishaye Adhyaso Vishayatad Dharmanam Adhyaso Vishayatad Dharmanam Sarvo Hipura Avastite Vishaye Sarvo Hipura Avastite Vishaye Vishayantaram Vishayantaram Adhyasyati Adhyasyati Yushmat Pratyaya Petasya Yushmat Pratyaya Petasya Cha Pratyagat Manaha Cha Pratyagat Manaha Avishayatvam Avishayatvam Bravishi, bravishi. See here, here there is a question which is asked by a opponent. Like I said initially, the whole Bhashyam appears like a question and answer in a similar format like the Upanishads. What is the question? The question is, how can um, superimposition be there if 
the self is not an object. Any superimposition, I see shell, sil shell as silver, it is an object outside. I see rope as snake, I see mirage water, they are all objects outside. But the self is not the object outside. How can there be superimposition? That is the question. That is a question of a Puro Bhakshi. See, all this question and answer, they help us to understand this topic a little bit more deeper. As you go through these topics, just, just listen initially to these 16 sections. When you go through these fully, you will get some idea of what is this. You will not understand 100%. Each one of us, depending on the purity of the mind, how much we have cleaned up our minds, our masnas have been reduced, accordingly you will understand this bhashya. But you will definitely get to know the topic at least. Oh, this is the topic. Again, you revisit this after one or two years. After you have gone through the Upanishadic study, again you revisit this. That's what we will do at the end of the Upanishads when we, before we start the Brahma Sutra, we'll go through this Bhashyam one more time. At that time, you'll say, oh my God, this is so easy. Katham Punaha. Now Pariksha is being done. Examination of this Adhyasa is being done. What is this Adhyasa? How is it happening? Going deeper into our mind structure. Pratyagatmani avisheya adhyaso vishaya dharma. Now, in the inner self, which is the subject, how is it possible that there is superimposition of the anatma, which is outside? Body, mind, and its properties are outside. But you are telling me it is happening inside the mind. How it is possible? How is dharma adhyasa possible? How the property of the body can be superimposed with the consciousness? Atma is a vishaya. A vishaya means it is not an object of cognition. What are the objects of cognition? Shabda, sparsha, rupa, rasagandha. The five sense objects are there, the five sense organs are there. Therefore, interaction is possible, adhyasa is possible. Sarvohi puro avastite vishaye vishayataram adhyasyati. So, this is the rule which is given by the puro bhakshi opponent. What is the rule? He says all superimposition is only possible on objects in front of us. Like rope snake, like shell silver, like sand and mirage, like one moon and two moon, all this is clear. Yes, yes, yes. It's possible because it's all objects. I can mistake one object for the other. Yushpat pratyaya apitesya cha pratyaga atmanaha abhishet. One, bravishi, you are propounding yushmat pratyaya. Yushmat means this. Thisness. Superimposition on the self, which is a non object, it is unseen. How can you have superimposition on of a seen object with an unseen subject? That is the question. Now, Guru Bhakshi says, I have caught you. Right in the beginning, he said, There's no adhyasa. Then Shankaracharya says, yes, yes, there is a dhyasa. I can give you examples like shell silver, all that, all that. Then Guru Bhakshi says, no, no, no. Okay, I accept there is a dhyasa. But my question now is, a dhyasa is possible on the object outside, but how is it possible on the subject? For superimposition, objects should not be fully seen. Perception is of two types, Samanyamsha and Viseshamsha. What is Samanyamsha? Samanyamsha is known. Idamamsha of rope should be there. 
that that means i see a row that is called as samanya amsha samanya means it's a known object outside i may not know that the rope is a rope that is called as vishesha amsha that is this is what the objection towards adhyasa why so superimposition can happen it can only happen between object and object not between subject and object now vedantin comes and says your rule is wrong you cannot derive a rule according to your own imagination self is not an object of cognition but it is the perceiver not grahya vastu it is unseen even though it is a subject it can still have superimposition that is what is the contention of vedanta taitri upanishad says very clearly yatho vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah anandam brahmano vidwan na viveti kadashchaneti शरीर आत्मा वॉट इट सिंपली मीन्स इज दैट वर्ड्स के नॉट रीच द सेल्फ बिकॉज वर्ड्स आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन द कॉन्शियसनेस कठोपनिषद ऑल्सो सेज दिस दीज आर ऑल डिफरेंट कोटेशन विच गिवस अस द uh which gives us the uh the idea of what the self is and how self is a subject of a different nature but still superimposition can happen ashabdam asparsham arupam avyayam this i have taken many times in meditation also that means this self is without sound without touch without form without decay without taste without smell without a beginning without an end this is what kathopanishad says this is the nature of the self it neither has a beginning it neither has an end it always is awareness consciousness always is it is eternal that is my nature i am that pure consciousness i have no death as consciousness i have no birth that is what is the upanishadic teaching to me i have to note that if that is my true nature i can still have superimposition because of ignorance that is what shankaracharya is now dwelling deep into the subject matter of ignorance mula avidya so now we'll go to the seventh section so that is the question and that is the answer this is this the 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 reply continues in the seventh mantra which we read now उच्यते उच्यते न तावत अयमेकांतेन न तावत अयमेकांतेन अविषयः अविषयः अस्मत्प्रत्यय विषयत्वात् अस्मत्प्रत्यय विषयत्वात् अपरोक्ष प्रत्यक आत्म प्रसिद्धे च प्रत्यक आत्म प्रसिद्धे न चयमस्ति नियम न चयमस्ति नियम पुरावस्थित पुरावस्थित विषय विषयांतर विषय विषयांतर अद्यस्तव्यम 
इति अप्रत्यक्षे अपि अप्रत्यक्षे अपि आकाशे आकाशे बाला बाला तलमलिनता अदि तलमलिनता अदि अध्यस्यन्ति अध्यस्यन्ति एवं एवं अविरुद्ध प्रत्यक आत्मनि अविरुद्ध प्रत्यक आत्मनि अपि अपि अनात्मा ध्यास अनात्मा ध्यास so in this seventh section shankaracharya says that even though subject is pure internal it is doesn't have any upadi it doesn't it is pure like akasha here he introduces the example of akasha space he says that pure consciousness can have superimposition exactly like space has superimposition on the objects for example we say room space because of the upadi which is wall so con space is enclosed in the room space is enclosed in the hall space is enclosed in a stadium space is enclosed in the whole cosmos space is nirguna it is no properties it has no properties but still we say it is small space pot space jug space room space because there is superimposition similarly consciousness is in this body is in another body consciousness is in all bodies all pervasive nature but it is property less nirgunam it cannot be seen superimposition takes place because of a body the medium around it that is the essence of this verse the question was brilliant and the answer is also brilliant it's a very important section uchchate we will answer this question see how beautifully shankaracharya a very a very very beautifully he constructs this sanskrit verses how in the self there is superimposition of the non self on the consciousness how the body is superimposed how the mind is superimposed how a thought is superimposed the self can't be cognized as an object of the senses and the mind which we all know my mind cannot know consciousness as an object my sense organs cannot know consciousness as an object but the self can be cognized as the subject without the medium of the senses and the mind this is the revelation of upanishads ashabdam asparsham all that is clear but still consciousness is felt by all of us it is a normal uh, accepted universally experienced subject अस्मत् प्रत्यय विषयत्वाद अपोरक्षत अपोरक्षत्वाद च प्रत्यगात्मा प्रसिद्धे हे प्रत्यगात्मा द इनर सेल इज प्रकर्षेन नोन इज प्रकर्षेन प्रकर्षेन मींस वेल नोन इट इज नॉट एन अननोन एंटिटी यू आर सेइंग इट इज नॉट नोन बिकॉज़ इट इज नॉट एन ऑब्जेक्ट बट आई एम सेइंग इट इज इट इज इट इज सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज वेल नोन well known in the upanishads if you study the upanishads it will say that you are the subject which is which is apratiksham which is not seen 
So Pratyagatma has got two forms. The inner self, the consciousness, has got two natures. What are the two natures? See the brilliant answer of Shankaracharya. One nature is conditioned form of consciousness. The conditioned form of consciousness is known as object of cognition. Whereas unconditioned form, no one can know it as an object. The same consciousness is in the same space. When it is conditioned, we say it is small space. I don't even have space in my room to put another object. So we, we use that term. So like that, consciousness is conditioned and unconditioned. In the sleep state, it has no upadi. Like the uh, space without any, without any walls around it. There is no wall around uh, space when you look at space from the cosmos angle. Complete blanks in that space, the cosmos comes in. Everything is in space. Similarly, consciousness is like that. No one can know it as an object because it is the very subject. That is why in the sleep state, Whenever they, we want to know what is Atma, the only way you tell I am that consciousness, that is the only statement you can make about consciousness. You cannot say I know consciousness. Then you are making it as an object, like you are making an object of everything else in the world. Aham Brahma Asmi. I am that Brahman. I am that pure awareness. That is the statement you say in the state of meditation. And see what happens. Pure self. Now that you have the knowledge, unconditioned pure self, without any conditionings of the three avastas, there is no mind involved, which is in the sleep state. There is no mind involved in the dream state. There is no mind involved in the waking state. Who are you? Unconditioned Atma. I am talking, I am walking, I am doing, I am enjoying, I am experiencing. These are all conditioned experiences. Like the conditioned space. A conditioned space you can measure. You, it has utility value. You can sell space and make money, that is utility value. Unconditioned space is infinite space, but you feel the curvature and the concave, concavity. It is not an object of senses. That's what Shankaracharya's reply is. In the same way, like how we are superposing space and the objects, space and the walls around. Similarly, consciousness, you cannot say it is totally unknown because it is known. Known not as an object, but known as a subject. Not totally known, like asmat pratiya vishayatvar. It is not known as yushmat. It is known as asmat as subject. It is known in a conditioned way as the subject. That is what Shankaracharya's reply is. See, Puru Bhakshi said, you, it is not an object. Shankaracharya says, I agree. But that is not the rule for superimposition. Then in the next verse, he will say, what is the rule? Aparoshatvacha, if you intuitively seek yourself, you will realize you will know your true self. Then he gives to understand aparoksham, you must know three words. First, you should know what is pratyaksham. You should note second paroksham. And then you will know what is Aparoksha. 
What is pratyaksham? Pratyaksham means whatever lies in front of the senses and the mind. In front of me, there is a table, there is a chair, there is a phone. These are all pratyaksham. Pratyaksham means using the other sen uh, senses also. I hear a sound, I feel, taste. That is also called as pratyaksham. Pratyaksham includes all the five senses. What is paroksham? What is not directly known by my senses, but it is known through the TV, newspaper, or through somebody else's reports, which is vicarious knowledge, that is called as paroksham. So in the world, we can have either protection right in front of me or paroksham. Two things are possible. This is what everybody knows. A layman knows pratyaksham and paroksham. Then you come to Vedanta and you study Upanishads or Bhashyam. You will come to know about the self, which is Atma, which is called as Aparoksham. Aparoksha means what? Direct knowledge without any medium of the senses or the mind. The self in an unconditioned way is called as Aparoksha Jnanam. Consciousness which is not conditioned by a medium, which is my real nature, is Aparoksha. It is the Nitya Paroksha Vastu in this cosmos. It is the only Aparoksha Vastu for you, for me, for everybody, it is Aparoksha. Because it happens to be myself and there is only one self in this universe. As per the scriptures. The amness without the I-ness is the true I. I am with reference to objects and the world. It is conditioned. But when you remove the conditioning of the world, that is what is I-ness, which is the pure I. So what is the difference between conditioning and, 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 uh, and pure? In the sleep state, there is no conditioning. If you remove the ignorance of Atma, in the waking state, there is a conditioning of ignorance. Therefore, I do not know myself. When there is conditioning, the true I gets hidden. But when there is no conditioning, like in the case of space, there is no conditioning for space and you see one space in the entire cosmos, when you deconditioned all the bodies, all the minds, and you look at the upahitam enclosed consciousness, that enclosed consciousness awareness is one, a come. This is how you see singularity in this universe. Advaitam in the universe, there is no plurality. It's very deep. The experience of self without the association of the body mind is the pure core experience, which is called as Turiyam I. It is Aparoksha Jnanam, unconditional I, no conditions attached, no avastha, drop the avastha, who am I, drop the bodies, who am I, drop the five koshas, who am I, that is Turiya, that is the pure self which is the subject matter of the Upanishads. 
Isn't it very interesting to note that that is my real nature? Do you want to know that? Yes, yes, yes. Come and study the Upanishads. You will know the true nature. This, this particular page, number 110, very, very important. Understand it. Read it again and again till you understand the self very clearly as Aparoksha Vidya, Aparoksha Anubhuti. The whole text of Aparoksha Anubhuti is based on this one simple chart. Pratyaksha, Paroksha, Aparoksha. Aparoksha is very simple, but it is known only because of the scriptures of the Turi Atma. I am is the experience of existence of yourself without the notion of other person, objects, or the world in which there is no duality. This pure amness is called as aparoksham. It does not go away in deep sleep. Also, it is eternal, immortal, beyond time and space. Were you there in deep sleep? Yes, 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 I was there. Of course I was there. That's why I get up in the morning. In what form? How were you? As this unconditioned I, not the waker I, not the dreamer I, not the sleeper I, because those are all three conditions of the mind. I am the Thuriyam I. I am the pure I, in which there is no dhyasa, no superimposition. In right now, I am in the waking state. There is superimposition of that pure I with the mind, with the body, with the world. I remove these three mediums and see who am I. The conditioned I is the waker I, with reference to the gross body, which I see in the waking world, in the waking state. The conditioned I is the dreamer, dreamer I. The dreamer eye is conditioned with the subtle body. He sees only the projections of the mind in the dream state. The conditioned eye is the sleeper eye with reference to the causal body of ignorance, darkness, blankness, nothing I know, which is called Mula Vidya. That is all conditioned I. The non-conditioned I is this pure Thuriyam. I'm not dead in deep sleep, this, but I am this amnes, pure, concrete, solid experience of our unconditioned true nature, the Aparoksha I. It is not known through pratyaksham, not, thrown, non, no, not known through the senses. It is not known paroksham, but it can be known intrinsically. By whom? If you ask who knows this consciousness, the Shruti says it is self-luminous subject. Swaprakasha Surupaha. Very important word in Vedanta. Swaprakasha. I see only blankness. That is an object of cognition. Drop that object and ask who am I? Who is seeing that? That is the Swaprakasha. That is the self-luminous Atma. In the sleep state, I am the self luminous Atma, ever effulgent I, Chaitanyam principle, the Sat principle. This is revealed by the Upanishad. I will never know this on my own if I ask the question, who am I? I need the support of the Upanishads, which will tell me how to, how to know this self. It gives me a step-by-step -step guidance. That is why the Upanishad is called as the light of knowledge. It is not which has satness in it or chitness in it. Body, world, or objects of cognition, 
with satness and with chitness. But in the pure consciousness, it is purnaha, it is complete, it is full, and there is no trace of duality. That is why it is called as Advaita philosophy. Shankaracharya in this seventh section is completely telling us about the subject Atma in us. It is not a dull, inert, but it is Ananda Swarupa, blissful nature. The poor words cannot know how to fathom the depth of this unconditioned self. Therefore, Taitri Upanishad says, Yato vacho nivartante. These words, poor words of the coming out from my tongue, cannot reach that pure self. It turns back. Neither my mind can think about this Atma because it is a substratum for the mind. It is Prasiddha, well known to all of us. And Vedanta child, the scriptures are like the children. Are, it's like prattling. It is trying to explain to us little by little. Because we are the children of that mother Shruti. Pure amnes is aparoksha vacha. It is not paroksham, it is not pratyaksha. It can be known without the medium. It is Swaswarupa, self effulgent. Whereas conditioned is Pratyaksham or Paroksha. All conditioned experiences, we call it as Anatma. So the pure self is not an object, but it is the self shining being. It is non dual, it is the concrete experience of all of us. I don't know this self as yushmat pratyaya. Yushmat means what? Asmat yushmat. If you remember the first verse, yushmat means this. The self, it can, we can never know as a, this object, but it can be known as asmat, I am. Keno Upanishad says, what speech cannot reveal, what reveals the speech is this light of consciousness. What you cannot feel with the mind, but because of which the mind feels, that is this Atma. Pratyek Atma Prasiddhahe, unconditioned Atma is well known through the Shruti. It may not be known as an object outside, but it is known as the subject. It is, the sub, it is revealed by the Shruti, by the scriptures, as the core of all of us. So the con objection was, how can you superimpose Atma on Anatma and Anatma on Atma if the self is not known as an object? We do, know, we do know the conditioned self as our nature today, that is the reply. We do not know the pure self as our nature, that is our problem. So shell rope in front of us can be seen. It, uh, there is no rule that only the object can be a substratum for the superimposition. The subject can also be the sub, can also be the substratum for superimposition. Nacha I am asti niyamaha. There is no rule, only object can be the substratum for superimposition. Puro avashite eva vishaya. Object in front of senses is pratyaksha vishaya. So self is not fully known, but it is known. 
Okay, what I'll do is I'll stop here. Uh, I'll continue this next week, uh, not next week, I will continue it when I come back. But this essence of this, uh, uh, of this verse is, of this verse is that Veda reveals the three states as not the truth. It reveals, I am the consciousness in which these three states are coming. Like space, in this verse, space is taken as an example. Like space, which is unconditioned, but it becomes known. Similarly, Atma, it can be known. If you are Aviveka, like children, then it is not known. Then you will look at the space and say, space is concave, it has got curvature, and so on. So on. You will say there is that, that, that there is dirt in the space, malina adi. That means that, uh, uh, that you don't differentiate pure space from the conditioned space. There is no difficulty in comprehending this adhyasa if you know pratyek atma. If you know the pure self, it is easy. Pure self is not pratyaksham or paroksham, but it is aparoksham. So the space is the example which is quoted here. Even thoughts are an object of comprehension. They are not the one which is observing the thought is consciousness. So like space, which, is, uh, which can have superimposition, consciousness can also have superimposition. That is the essence of this verse. And now Shankaracharya has to show that adhyasa happens due to ignorance. Now he has shown adhyasa can happen in the self. He has given the example of the moon, why plurality is seen. In the next section, section 8, which we will uh, study on the uh, 2nd of April or uh, on the 9th of April, which uh, depending on my travel, we will come back and start the 8th section. And this is where Shankaracharya says that ignorance is the cause of adhyasa. And lack of discrimination is the cause. If I know how to remove this ignorance through knowledge, I can remove the ignorance. I can remove the adhyasa. See, Shankaracharya gives a clear picture of how to remove this superimposition in the following verses. From 8 onwards till the 16th, he will tell, he will teach us how to remove this ignorance, how to remove this adhyasa. Uh, so, I will conclude here. There will be no session. I'm traveling this Wednesday and I'll be back most probably on the 2nd of uh, April. So I may not have the class on the second. I will let you know on the second if there is a class or not. 19th and 26th, there are no classes for sure. Second, I'm not sure if I can take it. If I can take it, I will send a WhatsApp message. If I can't do it, then we will meet on the 9th of April. So three sessions we may not have. We'll see how it goes. My notes for Adhyasa Bhashyam, I have circulated today till the 11th section. So from 8 to 11, you already have it today. By next week, before I leave, I will finish the notes of all the 16 sections. I will circulate to you. For those of who, you who are very keen to know what is there between 8th section and 16th section, you can go through these notes 
you will get a glimpse of Shankaracharya's answer. There are many people who are very curious. They call me, discuss with me about this Adhyasa Bhashya. For those people, you, I will finish within two, three days. I have almost completed the uh, notes. It's just getting typed within two, three days. It will be sent to you. So by Wednesday, Thursday, you will have this, all the notes, the complete notes of Adhyasa Bhashyam running into about 200 pages will be sent out so that in the balanced days, you can read through the notes. It is exactly the same notes I will be taking for, uh, in, the, in the classes. So it will be the revision for you. And it's quite simple. From now on, it is quite simple. And uh, you should be able to follow when you read the notes itself. But it is a fundamental, important uh, text to study before the Upanishads. When you do this, you will find it very easy. Upanishad study becomes extremely easy. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnahat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om There are no questions on the chat box. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask them yourself. Uh, you, are, you can unmute yourself and ask the questions. I'm Shakarji. Uh, yes, yes, I'm Yanshu. Tell me. Uh, I'm really blessed to be in these classes. I'm still more blessed uh, to be able to follow what you were saying. It's all going excellently well, Samiji. Now, Thank you. My question is, will I, be, will I ever be able to uh, understand the same in my dream also? Because in my dream, I go back to the old thing, same, I mean, humble jumble, everything is happening. Yeah, Never yeah, I... yeah. very good question. Yeah, you see, um, if what will happen is, your mind will become pure. You see, when you do this Adhyasa Bhashyam, your mind will get extra purity. Now, this extra purity, clarity in the mind will help you to understand that the dream is just as, is an accidental phenomenon. Don't give any, any importance to the dream. It don't give any importance to the dream at all. So hmm. take it easy. Dream will come and go exactly like waking will come and go. What Shankaracharya says, don't even take the waking as, as, as very serious. At any time, don't take anything as very serious because it is, it is the nature of the world to appear and disappear, appear and disappear. You think that I am the pure consciousness in which all this is happening. Even the waking is like a dream only, which is just happening and going. That's all. As consciousness, you will be able to say for with 100% clarity, what, just wait till the Bhashyam is over. I'm telling you, this Bhashyam is amazing. It is, it will take you to the depth and it will, Shankaracharya will make it so simple in the end. And he will say, take yourself as this pure consciousness and live throughout the life as a free person. With nothing, don't worry about anything in life. Okay, things are happening, going, coming, all this is, is, is like a wave in an ocean. You be the substratum, the ocean, let the waves come and go, don't bother about it, 
you cannot stop the waves. That is, the wave is coming because of the wind of prarabdha karma. Our experiences in life are going to come. Definitely it will come for each one of us. As long as we have this body and the consciousness is enclosed in this body, we cannot stop experiences. Maybe dream or in whatever. Whether it is dream or waking, you cannot stop the experiences. Experiences will be felt as long as we are in this body. The moment you are outside this body, like in sleep state, you do not experience anything. That is my real nature. That is my true state. That is what Shankaracharya is using this Bhashya to tell all his opponents that you are all suffering because you do not know this superimposition. Hmm. So does it answer your question? Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Chris is uh, from uh, from the U.S. He's uh, joined from Miami, and uh, he's uh, he's just put a, a remark here. There are a couple of people who who get up at five in the morning to attend these talks. So uh, he is a very uh, long friend of mine. He's been going through these sessions for so many. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, two three years. I think he has been going through. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, but nevertheless, uh, he goes through the recordings and uh, he gives me feedback on how he has understood. And, uh, you know, that's very useful when you send a feedback. Uh, thank you, Chris. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Shama. Shikriti, thank you so much. Hari Om. Um, just uh, the quick questions. One is you said about uh, we see the glitter in the shell, okay, um, or silver in the shell because of the mind trying to superimpose. It's because of the greed. Now that's a question which I find it difficult to understand in the sense of are we saying all our adhyasa in terms of what I see of the world is essentially mm, uh, determined by my own value judgments, you know? Yes, it is, it is. Yeah. So you, in this case, you're saying it's because of the greed. In other words, I thought it's a perceptual error, you know, where, because it looks like silver, this, uh, the, the whatever rays are shining on it, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, one person seeing as silver and somebody else seeing as something else because it's just a recognition of that it looks like silver. Why would it be determined by the mental state of greed for a particular individual? Okay, uh, good question. See, uh, what you're saying is it is just a pure error because of perception that you can accept. Yeah. Whereas how, how uh, greed comes into play. See, greed is coming. It's just, a, it's just an example given how we, uh, how this uh, adhyasa takes place in the world. For example, shobhana adhyasa. Shobhana adhyasa is because of greed. Uh, I have an uh, uh, attraction towards certain objects in the world. That is called a shobhana adhyasa. Because of my attraction, why does the attraction come? Because of the Vasana, which is there in my mind. Right. Suppose there was another person who didn't have a Vasana for silver. Mm. He will not have this, he will not look at the shell as silver. Suppose it is a Swamiji is walking around. The Swamiji doesn't care whether it is a shell or a silver or whatever it is. He will not have the Adhyasa because he doesn't have the greed to uh, accumulate, uh, to, to, to buy something. To, he doesn't, he's, he's not different. You mean so to say he will not notice it? He will notice it, but it will not strike him as silver. Oh, he I will see. see it as shell as shell and go away. Okay. So, so he is more likely to see the more accurate picture. Yes, he is more likely because of greed, it help, it, it, you, you tend to see the shell as silver. Mm -hmm. 
So in almost all our daily transaction, therefore, we are, um, we like something or we don't like something. Shobhana and Ashobhana is what yeah. is actually happening. Yes, yes. Um, just and Ashobhana Adhyasa is very clear. You know, Shobhana Adhyasa is a shell silver. Ashobhana Adhyasa is the rope snake. Yeah. So whatever uh, I want, I don't like in the world, I try to, I try to move away from, you know? And, and even this likes and dislikes of the Shobhana Ashobhana is essentially determined by how so through several, several births, whatever vasanas or whatever impression we have gathered accordingly at that moment in time, we are seeing something as whatever it is. Yes, yes, you're right. That's why yes. vasanas are in the mind are very, very important for adhyasa. Right, yeah, yeah that was the question which yeah. I want to know. Why is a mind conditioned or not conditioned? Correct, yes. See, when the mind becomes unconditioned, when it gets the knowledge of Atma. Okay. Um, so, therefore, what we see at the present of ourselves or our awareness is the conditioned self, yeah? Yes. And which is also can be called the Yushmak principle or yes. Aham Idam. Aham Idam. Um, and yes. I've also said about this is uh, the um, I ness. Yes. Not I am. It is yes. the I ness. Correct. So all I ness, the I notion in the body. Yeah. So this is all uh, equivalent terms. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then one very curious question which I have is. is um, I mean, there are so many people like in, for example, different religions or different uh, disciplines or even amongst our own sages whom we know that they, some people have never ever read, you know, like a, a, um, Gita. Yes. He never actually had uh, a, you know, that, that was the story of the Satyakama Jabala, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah where he actually did not even, he was sent away by the guru to say, go and, you know, take these cows and bring, come back when you are become thousand. Yes. Yeah. So, and in the process, by the time even the bull was teaching, the sky was teaching, the earth was teaching everything. Yes. So what I mean is that even without the Shastra knowledge, this is the question which I have. Would it be possible that uh, uh, the Atman or the observer or the Atman will eventually discover its own self? The real self will, uh, in other words, the observer himself will have, would have realized the observed. What the scriptures tell, I will tell you, that's all, you know. Uh, the scriptures are very clear in this this question what you the, what you're asking without the knowledge of scriptures can atma know by itself yeah yeah the answer is no atma cannot know by itself it is possible that you have done in the poor janma some some study of atma in this birth, you may not do it, but somewhere you, some guru has taught that you are the Atma. You are the pure consciousness. It has to come from a conscious guru to a conscious student. But he will, you see in, this, in the Puranas, in the Bhagavatam, there are many stories. But these are all stories to attract the people to come to Vedanta. <laughs> they all are stories. Come, 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 come. Listen to the scriptures. Listen to the scriptures. And somewhere in Bhagavatam, you will have the Atma and Atma Viveka done, and they will, they will, they will get a clarity. Cleverly, they will. It will be thrown in. Yes, it is all stories built for attracting the people. It is like advertisement, you know. I, I do enjoy them very much. Yes. 
Uh, good. You see, you, you it, different people enjoy different things, but ultimately, as I, from what Upanishads say, there is no, I mean, just wait till the 16th section is over. From 8 to 16, there are, uh, you just see what how the uh, Shankaracharya ends it, and you yourself will have the answer to this question. See, for example, you, you yourself will get the answer because Shankaracharya reveals the nature of Sakshi and says everything else in the world, every moment of our life is lived in Adhyasa. Every breath, every moment, every thought is Adhyasa. And you are that consciousness in which everything is in which everything is coming and going. Know yourself to be this pure consciousness, and you are freed from birth, freed from sorrow, freed from Dvaita principle forever. So eventually there is no Yashmada, Ushma. Yes, there is no Yashma, Dusma. All this is gone. Only one non-dual consciousness alone is. So that people is, in the intense bhakti marga, like people like Mirabai or whatever, yes, yes. Uh, they did realize the highest, do we assume? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. Yeah. So, they all came to the same truth of non-duality. Right. Every seeker, whether he has gone through the bhakti marga or the jnana marga or the through the upasana, everybody has come to the same. Whatever Shankaracharya has realized as his nature, that is what he is trying to say. This is you. Mm -hmm. Whether it is Ram Krishna Paramasa, whether it is Swami Chinmayananda, whether uh, any jnani, what he has realized is what Shankaracharya is explaining in this Vashya. Okay. In the way they have realized it is what he's explaining. This, this, this adhyasa you remove, the medium you remove, body and mind you remove, automatically the world is gone. Because it is only through the body we are seeing the world. The senses are active, therefore you see the five sense objects in the cosmos. When the senses are not active because the mind has gone to rest, there is nothing except you and that ignorance. Mm. And that ignorance is, uh, is gone because the Upanishad says that ignorance is nothing to do with you. You are that consciousness. This is the darkness in the intellect which is removed. And you stand naked to yourself, pure self. I am that consciousness. And that is the consciousness I am in everyday sleep. I am that. Even if you sleep in the daytime, it doesn't matter. You are that. Again, you wake up because of vasanas. Your vasanas are active. It will disturb your sleep and you will make you get up. Again, so, you go through the motion, but don't worry about whatever your mind is going through. You see, we get carried away by our by our experiences in life. So, can I assume last question, Thomas? This is the um, this compelling force of one of seeking, even when I in, in, consciously I will tell myself forget it, you know, and I've done that so many times. Yes. You just cannot help it. You can't and help it. You will come yeah. back. <laughs> so is that, what is it? It is that... Vasana. Uh, it is the Vasana of the scriptures. It is pulling you back to the scriptures. Okay, all right. There is okay. a fight going on in your mind between the Vasanas of the world and the Vasana for the scriptures. The Vasana of scriptures will always win the battle. Thank you for saying... <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. I can't hide it. Mindfully. Okay. Anybody else has a question? But if you are mindfully living, 
Do you think the vasanas will have any effect on you also? Yes. When you are mindfully living with this truth principle, vasanas do not disturb you. Ah, that's good. Yes, vasanas will still be there, but it is like in the daylight you see the stars, you know. Mm. The stars don't bother you because it's so bright. You are you are you are you are living in your true nature of pure consciousness. A little bit of vasanas of some thought disturbances will come and go, and you are not so bothered. You know, okay, it is just a passing phase. It comes, okay, it happened. You see, come to realize the fact that all our experiences are are anithyam. Moment to moment, moment to moment, change. Our experiences are moment to moment changing. Every moment there is a change of experience. You see, we are we are seeing this river flow. This is given in many books. That it, when we take a dip, a dip in the Ganga, it is not the same water in which we are taking the dip. It is, it is the water has flown. You are. It is, it is, you are not seeing the same world again tomorrow. It has, it has become a different world. Mm. Because of your vasana of yesterday's world, you are still remembering it as if it is the same world. Scene is always changing. The seer is constant. Mm. I have the seer yeah. consciousness. I hold on to the seer as consciousness. I learn to drop and live with the scene. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Anybody thank else? You, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hari Ji. Yeah, yeah. But tell me. So the ultimate answer is Ukraine is not in, innocent, or the the Western world is not you know, upholding all the truth, everything, yeah. and Putin is not a criminal. Okay. Well, okay. Anyway, that is in the transactional world. We are talking about the higher world of the realm is different the realm is atma yeah. in the lower world in the transactional world everything will happen it will continue to happen we can't stop it but i yeah. don't give too much importance to it i give importance okay. to the seer in me i am the consciousness i live a blissful life of atma that is the way we should go forward Thank you.